Islam is having a very hard time getting to a title fight. He didn't have what's known as the mandate of the masses. He had the skills, or so it appeared, but that's not how it works. You must have, you must have a segment of the audience behind you pushing and requesting and requiring. That is your job. The fighters will spend all their time. How do I throw a jab? How do I throw a cross? How do I throw a hook? They will spend zero time. How do I make people interested? And I bring this to you because that was true. I mean, he had to beat like nine guys. He had to beat like 16 out of, I think it was like 15 and one or 16 and one. It was a, just a beautiful record that Islam had. But his ability to draw was not there. His ability to bring interest was not there. That has changed. I mean, there is a road, even if you don't want to work the stick, there's a road. First guy to ever take it was Chuck Liddell. Chuck Liddell had a training partner who he dominated every day, but that guy knew how to work the stick. That guy became the champion of the world and made all sorts of money. His name was Tito Ortiz. Chuck, though, eventually eclipsed it. And I don't just mean its skills. I mean, his pay-per-views and his checks greatly eclipsed it. There's a, there's a road. There's a way to get there. But I'm talking about today, what is it that Islam should do? Here, guys, when I tell you that the numbers, remember when I used to have that whiteboard? I still got my beautiful whiteboard. My pen went dry, but I wish I had it just to put a visual on this for you, okay? Let me give you some perspective. Islam, who the one and only resistance, and I'm, I'm quoting you guys, right? I'm bringing up this whole he doesn't draw. I'm doing all of that to get in front of what you might push back into my face. I'm letting you know that I'm aware that you're going to bring that argument. But we're, we're all aware that in this sport, you're only as good as your last fight, correct? Okay, because his last fight, I'm talking Islam here, was a top five of all time. We don't know where that fell. But we were told that by Dana himself. It will be a top five of all time. It could be number two, for all we know. We just know it was a top five. So, so all of a sudden, that I can't draw is now a record setter. So that goes away. The guy that he beat in Volkanovsky got booked, got licensed, got trained, got traveled, got money, got a W. Before Islam has even been booked, the guy he beat has made a million dollars before he's even been booked. Okay. Now let's take a look at Aljo, just for fun. But Aljo and Sean, that's right around the corner. That's somewhere in August. The night that that fight happens in Boston, Aljo's last performance, which will be his match against Henry Cejudo, will have been 90 days prior. Aljo was booked within 14 days of beating Henry Cejudo. I believe the exact number was 11, and I believe at the press conference, the night that he beat Cejudo, it was said, this is what's going to happen. So, Aljo had a face-to-face. -face. Sean jumped in the ring. They had the, the episode with the coat. They had a the great piece of theater there. I don't believe that that gets you turned around, get you back to Boston, get you another paycheck and another job within 90 days. But it was something that happened. It was a piece of that. You have Jamal Hill, who has relinquished the belt. But if I said this piece yesterday, I would call the champion of the world. And he sat for six months while guys within that division got fights and fights and more fights. And I'm just looking at the turnaround and what causes the delay. And you have some fighters that cost so damn much money, man, you got to get it right. You just can't, you can't do them a favor. You can't speed it along. You can't understand that they love and care about competition and therefore you need to get them a an opponent, you just can't, man. The, the numbers don't work. It's got, it's got to be right. It's gonna be the right guy with the right build at the right time, just to cover your spread. I think that we all understand all of these things, but a lot of those factors just simply don't apply. We're talking about Islam. Islam is now looking to be looking for the winner of the BML. 
And he's asking, he's talking about it. And I bring this to you because it's very relevant. I told you guys, Charles wasn't going to take the fight. And you shoved that in my face. You treated me like the puppy that missed the paper. And I wasn't telling you this is Chael's opinion. I shared with you. His coach said he's turned it down. He was a very honest guy. But maybe there was something lost in translation. He then went to his own personal social media to let us know his next fight will not be against Islam. I just told you guys these things. Oh, you rejected it. Somebody else has access to the account. Somebody else does. He then did an interview and said, I'm not fighting, Ch I'm not fighting Islam. At Abu Dhabi in October, I, I just came and brought this to you guys, and you told me no. And Islam's not time to fight him. And is Islam's got the inside scoop, whatever's going on there. And the fact that he's moved on and he's looking at the BMF, it, it means not only is he not fighting Charles, he doesn't have anybody to fight. And would the winner of the BMF be the rightful person to take on Islam? I don't think any of us would ever disagree with Justin Gaethje and or Dustin Poirier anywhere in the last five years being a number one contender for any reason of anybody on any notice. Those guys have been beaten in the last five years, both of them. You, you could still turn them around as number one contenders. Do you agree with me? I mean, it's just one of these spots where, where Islam is making it very clear, I need an opponent. And he could have gone after Volkanovski or we can wait for these guys. Or he could get some business going with Benny. And Benny's one of the bigger surprises for me. There, there is something known as precedence. Any industry has industry standards. They don't even have to be listed in the bylaws. They don't have to be listed in policies. You could show up to court with experts within the industry to tell the judge the industry standard is this. It can be written down nowhere. It can be backed by nobody. That will hold up in court. 100% if you have an industry standard and experts say this is how we do it, regardless of laws, that will hold up. We have an industry standard known as the Survivor Clause. So we had a semifinal with a number one contenders match with Charles and Benny. Charles won. Charles can't go on, which means Benny activated the Survivor Clause, goes on. He hasn't even brought it up. It isn't even mentioned. Nobody's mentioned it. It's a really good fix. That's the fight you all wanted to see. You can still see it. It makes a lot of sense. It's happening right now at 205 pounds. The circumstances are slightly different, right? The champion got hurt and he gave the belt back, but it still creates opportunity for other guys who can go on. And I don't know if this is the direction we need to go. I will just share with you. It's a very peculiar spot. And Islam continues to ask. He continues to suggest. I watch his comments. They always have a question mark as opposed to an exclamation point. And perhaps that is the first thing that needs to change.